But I, I was just a little bit frustrated in that game, obviously, because of the 20 to 22 run in the fourth. And I just, me personally, I'm, I look at the statistics and see the, see the Rubio and D'Lo on the court numbers together with their plus minus. And I, I get a little frustrated, especially when we go even smaller from Josh. We're already getting out rebounded. So I think that was, the, that was the most frustrating part. And just the starters, I don't think are, are playing the amount of minutes I would. Let, let I would me cut you off real quick. Let me cut you off real quick. So, so I think the question is there, right. Between by choosing to go with Ricky over Josh yeah. to, to close that game is you're prioritizing offense over defense. Sure. And, and like, obviously that didn't work, but I understand the idea of prioritizing offense over defense. And that's right. Cause basically, right. They just needed, they needed like a hand, like four or five buckets or four or yeah. five stops to close the game. So, so if you're Saunders, you're thinking, how do I get four or five of these things? And I think he bet on offense, which makes sense on this team. I think you have more offensive yeah. talent, but Rubio being the bet to make is not a good bet. Well, I, I just don't think it, it works in, in that situation when it's, when it's with Dilo. like, I don't know I'm probably not as low on Rubio as, as you guys are, but as a two guard, I don't think it like, what are you getting? I, if, you, if you just put Rubio out there, which this would never happen. If you took D'Lo off the floor there and you put Rubio out there for the last 10 possessions and you just ran a really structured offense, like you would probably get a couple of buckets. Yeah. But if you put, but if you put him out there and he's at the, the two, there's no, he can't organize anything. I was D'Lo's, D'Lo's usage rate in clutch time this season is 47%, 47%. That's insane. So literally that means, no one else is leading the action right there. So, so yeah. Rubio, so Rubio doesn't make sense if you're taking the offensive path. I'm, I'm with you there, but, but it's not necessarily like Josh was the solution either, or that's where I kind of wrestle with it. I don't yeah. think if you leave Josh out there, we're like, all right, we stopped DeRozan. Good. Yeah. Like, yeah. See my, my solution to that was, and I know we already played a lot of minutes in the fourth. Cause obviously that bench lineup was in a, a good amount before the starters. So I, I really like the Jane McDaniels at the four matchup there. And maybe he, he has a little bit more length to guard DeRozan and provide a little bit more offense than obviously Josh can do, but, but he was getting up with the pump fake thing over and over yeah, again. That's I, like it, Ant and Jaden couldn't, I, I'm not was, saying Jaden's a bad defender, but like yeah. the DeRozan matchups unique there where I don't think any of them were guarding going to be able yeah, to guard I agree. DeRozan. I agree. Yeah. But, sorry. I cut you off. So with the, with the Rubio thing, that's exactly what I'm saying. I feel like the only time you would want Rubio there is if he's the one bringing the ball up the court and running the offense. Otherwise I feel like he just doesn't provide that much value to the team. And I'd rather have someone else in the game, I guess. Yeah. Who though? Exactly. I, I agree. Like I agree, but, <laughs> but who are you, who are you playing? I mean, if Josh went to been a better offensive option, right? Yeah. That's just the problem, I guess. So, I, I mean, I guess you can say Jaden there and that's like, Floor spacing, but I get the idea of wanting to close the game when you're trying to get execution with the 30 year old over yeah. the 19 year old. I think Saunders learned his lessons uh, by the last time they played the Spurs, right? By closing sure. that game with Ant and that, that disaster where he didn't, you know, take the layup at the end of the game happened. Yeah, sure. 